I'm a little bit late to the party, but I just wanted to make a video talking about the Will Smith entanglement debacle that's been going on on YouTube and a lot across the internet really for the last couple of weeks. You know, a lot of people said, oh, he's very blue pilled. He's not a red pill guy. He's not an alpha male. There's some truth to some of these things, but it's not 100% accurate. So uh, I am going to be talking about, though, what he did get wrong, and we're going to learn some lessons here. If you guys are just joining me for the first time, I'm John from BulldogMindset.com. On this channel, I teach you how to be a man. I teach you how to be financially successful, how to build financial independence, how to get the physique you want, how to get the girls you want, and how to go from the victim mindset to the bulldog mindset. If that sounds like something that you are at all interested in, click the subscribe button, okay? Click the uh, bell to get uh, notifications on videos, and take the bulldog quiz if you haven't already. It's up in the corner here. It's also in the link below, and uh, I think you're gonna find that extremely useful for assessing where you are right now in your life as a man, as a bulldog. All right, so let's talk about what happened here. All right, so first of all, let's think about, I want you to think about Will Smith, okay? Now, there's this interview where he talked about becoming a, a famous actor so that he would never have a girl cheat on him again. Remember, I remember seeing this this little little clip and it was kind of interesting, right? You know, you, you look at that and and, and you kind of have to question, like when someone says that, are they really very red pilled? Probably not, probably fairly blue pilled. But at the same time, you have to look at Will Smith as being someone who is extremely successful in Hollywood. OK, good looking guy very popular, right? Music videos, all kinds of, you know, movie roles, right? So he is definitely in the category of a high status male, okay? So if he's a high status male, he's going to have a lot of attraction from females, okay? There, there's no question about that. And given, you know, the circumstances that they talked about in that, that interview with Jada Pinkett Smith, they were on a break for what, like a couple of years or something like that, right? Where they were basically separated, broken up. So if you think that Will Smith wasn't out there, you know, banging a lot of chicks at that time, you're crazy, okay? The, the dude was, he probably wanted the break. He was probably glad that she was hooking up with some other guy, you know, at, the, at that point, right? So that's all at this sort of surface level, okay? So, so think about it again. You know, you really have to think about like where was Will Smith and what's going on in this situation? Because I think a lot of people have been analyzing the situation, but they're analyzing it from a, trying to just look at Will Smith as this blue pill guy perspective as opposed to understanding what he is hiding as well. Right. So part of the reason why I think that interview went the way it did was because she sort of had him over a barrel. What she probably had him over a barrel with was that he couldn't really call her out very harshly. OK, because she could very well point to all of his indiscretions and all the women that he's probably slept with. And, and so it would be very hypocritical of him, right? She could, she could basically, you know, she had a lot of dirt on him. I'm, I'm sure, you know, again, I don't know hundred percent, but I, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be the case, right? So that's what I think a lot of people aren't looking at when they're looking at this situation is, so what is he doing in that situation? He's trying to get through this thing. He's trying to like talk about the things, but not really go into it because he doesn't want the table to be turned on him. Because at any point, if he crosses the line too much, she could say, well, what about this and, and this? and this and she could bring up things from his past he's trying to contain this fucking pr disaster that that went out there and trying to just talk about it and get it done with and, and be done with it she can basically say whatever she wants she can call it an entanglement she can say that she hadn't had fun in her life or joy in her life for some large amount of time or what it, or whatever or that you know she can say all of these kind of things that are going to basically emasculate him and he can't say a lot back if he wants to protect himself from the the things that she could bring up on him the dirt obviously like that like to me that this is something that is everyone's missing i, I don't i don't get why because it, it's pretty damn clear to me all right so with that said, let's talk about a couple of things, okay? So first of all, you know, one of the lessons that, that you can learn about this is that if you have a life like Will and you have side girls like he probably does, you're going to put yourself in somewhat of a compromised situation. Just realize that because, you know, if, if the things go public, 
okay? The dirt comes out on you, you've got skeletons in your closet, all right? So just realize that every single girl that's out there that uh, that you had some kind of entanglement with, okay, is a liability to you, and those liabilities are gonna stack up over time. Now, if you're the, the kind of alpha male guy that doesn't give a fuck about that, then that's fine, but just be aware that that's, that's going to happen, that's gonna be out there, all right? The second thing, and I think this is one of the critical mistakes that so many guys make and that Will made in this case, is letting other guys around your girl, all right? I don't know what the exact story was, but apparently he took this Augustus guy or whatever into his home, okay, and they tried to help him or whatever. Not a good idea, okay? Don't let guys around your girl. Like, it, it's so stupid when guys do this. You know, I go out and I'll be coaching guys at a, at a nightclub or, or whatever, you know, Vegas or something, and I will see guys taking their girls out there, and I'm thinking, are you stupid? Like, you're taking her out to a place where there are guys going to be hitting on her. It's not a very smart idea to do in, in general, right? In, unless you have some other plan in, in mind there, okay? But in general, so many guys are like, oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, and, and they let their girlfriend or whatever have friends that are men or, or or you know do the girls night out thing or whatever whatever kind of bullshit okay i'm not saying that you can't do any of that stuff i'm just saying that like realize if you do that what the consequences are going to be because eventually some guy that's smoother than you that's slicker than you okay is going to get in there okay she's going to have a couple of drinks and and the situation going to become compromised like it's just it doesn't matter how good you think your girl is how loyal she is like if you're setting yourself up for failure setting yourself up for those situations they're going to occur eventually and that's the thing that that will messed up on that's that was his first mess up he should have never let some dude around his girl in his house or any of that kind of shit. Like, I don't give the fuck, uh, fuck who you are. Like, I'm not tolerating that shit. Okay. And part of it is just because of the disrespect aspect of it. Right. It's like, you know, why would some guy want to hang around your girl? Like it's, it's fucking bullshit. Some guy is trying to pull that shit on me. I'm going to, I'm going to fucking kick his ass to the curb. I'm going to do a little bit more than that. Okay. Because it doesn't even matter if he has ill intent. It just looks bad. All right. And I'm not going to let some guy make me look bad in that way. Right. A lot of this is just all public image and that's what you're seeing here and why this whole thing blew up but guys like don't be a fucking idiot don't let guys around your girl it's, it's not even that you're scared it's not like any of those things it's just you're not fucking stupid okay because you know you know what guys are up to you know what uh, is likely to happen you know about hypergamy you should be smart enough to not let guys around your girl just fucking common sense all right next thing here is that when you look at the conversation what happened with this red table thing he really let her take control of the conversation again now i said why i think this is the case i think that she did have him over a barrel but in which case don't participate in things that are going to make you come across weak or where you don't have the upper hand okay so in that situation if he, he could have just stonewalled her the whole time and just not talk, said, mm, whatever. Okay, let her talk about whatever she wants to talk about, okay? And just fucking basically ignored it and just whatever. Not showing any kind of emotion or expression, not laughing around with her, not joking, not making light of it. Just like letting her say her fucking thing and then just saying, yeah, that's what happened. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right? And just holding, holding the frame there. Because what he did was he let her just take control of the conversation. And what I mean by that is, and, and you might say, well, if he's just letting her talk, wouldn't that be letting her take control? No, the fact that he went along with her frame, okay? That's the thing to understand is that the person who talks the most in a conversation is not the person who is in control of it. It's the person who is controlling the frame. Okay, if she's getting him to laugh and play like a little blue pilled cuck boy while she's talking about this shit, then she is controlling the conversation and she's controlling the frame and she's going to make him look like a blue pilled kind of idiot, which I don't know. You know, like I said, I don't know exactly where where he stands on this. Obviously, he's become a little bit more real red pilled since this whole thing. So as, as he's realized this, but, you know, remember, this happened a few years ago and he's still acting this way today. So that uh, that doesn't look too too good on him. So, you know, when you're in a conversation like that, again, I, I would have said that he should have probably not even done this at all. He should have just let the rumors be the rumors and let whatever people are going to say, because he made himself look worse, right? I mean, which is worse, all these people saying that, you know, this guy is, is screwed your girl or whatever, or actually going on on this 
you know, red table interview and actually confirming it and then looking like a, a blue pilled simp when, when that happens, right? Like, do you want to look like that on, on TV, on, on the internet? You know, he made himself look worse because he didn't have the, whether he had the ability to control the frame because he was over the barrel. I, I don't know for sure, but he certainly did not come in there controlling the frame of that conversation. He let her control it. He should have held the narrative. I mean, he tried to at some point, but he didn't, he didn't like, he let her off the hook, right? If you want to control the frame of the conversation, you say it, and then you don't allow someone to dodge the conversation. If they, if they try to play off what you just said, you say it again, okay? Or you say it in a different way, or you keep it right on the dial that, that you have said it, okay? And you don't allow the person to squirm or get, get off of there, right? That's what she pretty much did to him is she was, had him squirming, all right? That was the big problem there. Uh, the other thing that, that he did a lot, which made him seem weak in that conversation, again, another thing to understand is he did a lot of fake fronts, Okay, so he said some things like he was like, oh, yeah, I was done with you. <laughs> I, was, I was done with you when he was talking about the, the breakup or, you know, um, at the very end, I forget. He, he said something along the lines of, yeah, I was never going to talk to you again. It's, it's amazing that I'm talking to you right now or something like that. Those are fake fronts, okay? Because they're basically like threats, right? It, it's like a backwards, it's, it's like trying to show that you're tough, right? You don't need to show that you're tough if you actually are, right? The fact that you're talking with her, the fact that you're not done with her, that's that shows, that's enough, right? That, that shows enough. You weren't, we don't need to know that you were done with her. Anytime you're trying to like back prove that, that you used to be a tough guy or that you were a tough guy, uh, it, it makes you a weak guy. It, it, it doesn't work. So don't use those things. Don't use threats, okay? And don't call out the things that you feel are going to make you seem stronger, okay? They should be implied, right? You shouldn't have to say it, right? It, it's like getting in a conversation with a girl that you just met and, and saying, I make a lot of money, <laughs> okay? Not, you, it shouldn't be said, it should be implied, okay? You've got a nice watch, the way that you act, the way that you handle bills when they come, the way that you handle people, right? Your lifestyle, the things that you talk about that are auxiliary things in your life, ancillary type of, of things, those are the things that indicate that you're a man of wealth and sophistication, that you make a lot of money, okay? Not you saying that, all right? Saying it doesn't doesn't do anything. It makes it, it makes it worse. It makes it so that you're you're showing your insecurity, okay, and a weakness. And and he did that. He kept on doing that throughout the conversation is trying to like show that he was tough, but he wasn't. It, it was it was pretty weak. Uh, the other thing is is again playing it safe in the conversation. I I think Perhaps a lot of what happened was that because she had him over a barrel, he kind of had to play it safe. But again, maybe he should have just said, you know, what? fuck it. I don't give a fuck. You want to say some shit? Go ahead. You want to spill my dirty laundry? Go ahead. But I'm not going to let you put me in this fucking compromising situation. Don't even try this, bitch. Right? Like, you know, he should have just stopped laughing. That's the other thing I had on here. This he's laughing. He's joking. Uh, this is not a fucking funny matter. This is not something to laugh at. Like, you know, he might not care. Okay. He probably didn't care if she was going fucking some guy. doesn't care. But what he does care about is reputation and he does care about the disrespect. Okay. And what I saw was her disrespecting him the entire fucking conversation and him just laughing about it and just playing it off. There's a time to laugh guys. Okay. And there's a time to, to be serious. I think, you know, AMS talks about this a lot in, in his videos. And I have to agree with him. Like guys, you shouldn't be laughing. All right. A lot of times you should not be laughing. All right. In a conversation, especially when it's some kind of conversation that's loaded like this, you know, you should not watch what you say and you shouldn't be laughing. You should be like, all right, you know, say what you're going to fucking say, you know, say it fucking plainly. All right. And don't laugh about the shit because it's not funny. All right. That, that's, that's, that's the thing is when you're laughing, you're sort of letting people off the hook. You're trying to like ease tension. That's why it makes something really fucking uncomfortable is because you're trying to ease attention. Instead, you want to build up the tension, right? You know, he, he was playing it super safe in that conversation. So the lesson for you guys for this is, especially if you're in a situation where you're in a relationship, okay, you can't be walking on eggshells and being afraid of what you're going to say because you're not going to get laid tonight or you're going to get some repercussions or, you know, girlfriend, wife, whatever is going to go off on you and, and bitch you out. Okay. I, it doesn't fucking matter. Okay. If you're truly an alpha male, if you're truly a high value male, you're not going to give a fuck. You're just going to say whatever you want to say, and then you're going to let whatever she responds. It's fine. 
It doesn't fucking matter, okay? If you're carefully guarding your words and watching it, oh, but better watch out that I don't say it this way. I don't want to be offensive. I don't want to like get the wrath. Then you're already fucking beta pussy. Like you, you can't get out of that. And that's what he was doing there. And it's going to make you look weak. And so just say it. Just, just accept the consequences of what what you're going to say, right? If you've ever seen Russell Brand, okay, being interviewed on TV, he just says whatever the fuck he wants, okay? He doesn't give a fuck how you react to it. He doesn't give a fuck whether it is going to be politically correct or you're going to disagree with him. He's just going to say it, all right? And that's what you have to do is you have to just say it. And, you know, again, like I said, I think in this situation, there were certain circumstances that were preventing Will from doing this because he's trying to protect his image because he knows that there's a lot of dirt on him that she had. That's what my guess would be. But in that situation, he should never got himself into that situation that where he was going to be on. He, he should have just kept it, you know, whatever. People can say whatever they want, but he shouldn't have gotten on public on, on the internet, on a, you know, this video, whatever this stupid, you know, red table show is and let her basically emasculate him in front of millions of people. That was, that was a poor choice. Okay. Cause it's going to make him look weak at this point and there's not much he can do to recover from that. It's already kind of out there. You can see, you know, how he handled this situation. And, and again, it doesn't mean that in all of his life that he's not red pill, that he's this, you know, blue pilled, cuck or whatever you want, want to say. I, I don't think that's the case because the, the dude is a hardworking, uh, really you know, intelligent man. Again, you can be blue-pilled and be that, but what I'm saying is that he's probably has a lot of experience with women. I, I would imagine so. But, you know, I could be wrong. You know, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's hard to say. I'm about 50-50 on it because watching it, it did, you know, he did exhibit a lot of those behaviors. But like I said, you can learn a lesson from this, right? So biggest thing uh, to learn for this, before I tell you actually, uh, before I forget, make sure that if you haven't already, check out the Bulldog Mindset membership. There's a link down below. Uh, you can join us for $7 for the first month in the, the membership. Really awesome group of guys. This is, we talk about shit like this. You can have discussions like this. You can talk about on our Discord server uh, exactly, you know, what do you think about the situation? And, you know, this is a, a good place to bounce off ideas and to, to learn a lot of things. Also to get lessons on real estate investing, on uh, dating, relationships, uh, holding frame, uh, productivity, all those things, even some fitness and diet stuff there. So go check it out. All right. Now, uh, what I was going to say is real quick, I want to wrap up and, and give you like the, the basic lessons that you should be taking from this. Okay. So the first one is this. Okay. Understand that whatever you have going on on the side, it will probably catch up to you at some point. So just be prepared that the more that you have going on the side, the, the more danger you're setting up for yourself later because those things can surface, okay? Especially if you are famous or become famous or become high status, you become a target. Second, don't let guys around your girl. It's stupid, okay? Be aware of that. Just, just don't, okay? It's a disrespectful thing. If a guy wants to be around, like why would you even want to be around some other guy's girl? There's only one fucking reason, all right? I know it, you know it. Some guy fucking does that. You kick his ass to the curb and your girl wants to be around. You just ban her. She doesn't comply. You get rid of her. That's it. Next, don't let other people take control of the conversation. Hold the frame. Keep the frame in a conversation, okay? And, and you do that by making sure that you don't buy into their frame. Avoid laughing and giggling, all that bullshit, okay? Keep it serious when you need to keep it serious. When they're trying to keep it serious, then you laugh and you giggle and you 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 push them off of their frame, okay? That's what you do in order to hold the frame and you always carry the conversation. If you're not gonna be in control of this conversation, get out of the fucking conversation, all right? Will Smith should have exited that interview as soon as she started misbehaving, okay? Uh, Fake fronts don't fucking work. Stop laughing and joking and stop trying to say that you're tough and try to demonstrate that you're hard. You're not fucking hard if you have to say you're hard, okay? You're hard if you don't give a fuck, all right? You don't need to demonstrate that, okay? The worst fucking written books are the books where they spell out what the character is instead of you assessing what the character is from actually reading the book, all right? That's, that's the worst plot that you could fucking have in a movie or a show or anything like that where they spell it out for you. And, and stop playing it safe in conversations, guys, with, with women, all right? Fucking say shit that is gonna piss them off and don't give it, don't stay it on purpose necessarily. I mean, you can do it sometimes, but don't give a fuck. Like if you, a lot of women are gonna test you and they're gonna see if you're gonna walk in eggshells, if you're gonna be afraid of their reaction, it doesn't fucking matter, okay? Don't get into arguments, don't get sucked into arguments, but just say the, whatever the shit that you wanna say is, all 
right? And, and don't worry about the repercussions. If you're worried about the repercussions of your of what you're saying, then you're going to be a fucking pussy. There's just no way around it. And, and stop the laughing and the joking and shit. Like, if you're trying to dissolve tension, you are being a pussy. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Instead, if it's fucking serious, make it serious. Let it be serious. Don't fucking laugh. Don't laugh at your own jokes. Don't laugh at other people's jokes. Okay. Tell jokes. That's fine. Right. But you should, you should be not laughing all the time and being a, a fucking joker. All right. You sh it's, it's fine to laugh. It's fine to have a good time with, with your friends and shit. But the more that you do that and the more that that becomes a character trait of yours, the more that you're going to be seen as a fucking joker, not a serious guy, not, not the kind of alpha guy that women want to be with. They want to be with some guy that's a fucking Looney Tunes. All right. All right, guys, if you want to watch another video, watch this video on why alpha males have a low tolerance for women. I think that you will find that video to be really useful and I will talk to you next time.